uh, we will start with the worksheet ABG OSCE. Uh, most of you have submitted and I hope you are all right. So let's start with the first straightaway ABG. Uh, the first ABG which was there on the uh, worksheet was a 72 year old man admitted in a drowsy state. Someone is uh, unmuted, just mute yourself. Unmute only when you have to ask something, okay? A 72-year-old man is admitted in a drowsy state. He had 8 to 10 episodes of vomiting at home and is suspected to have intestinal obstruction. He is clinically dry and hypotensive. He is intubated and subclavian central line is secured. Now, very important, you have to look at the history and what are the questions which are asked? There are two questions which are asked. First was comment on his oxygenation status and second was what is the acid-base status? Now, whenever you have such scenario, at least when you're practicing right now, uh, you should go stepwise. The first step will be you anticipate what is there in the uh, ABG it's going to be. So in history, if you look at, your patient had 8 to 10 episodes of vomiting. So I would definitely expect some hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis. So in your anticipating acid base status over here, patient is diagnosed to have intestinal obstruction. He is dry and hypotensive. So dry Hypotensive is just now. It's not a prolonged hypotension which is mentioned. So you're not looking at the, uh, you know, metabolic acidosis or something. But dryness means, again, you're looking at metabolic alkalosis. He is intubated and has right subclavian central line. Now, if there is some extra information which is given, why, why someone wants to give you the central line which has been put? So there could be some significance to that. And this patient is already on intubation. He was admitted in a drowsy state. So it's quite possible that patient has underlying lung problem also. So, so now let us go with the first question. What is the oxygenation status? Now, when it comes to the oxygenation status, I, I hope all of you remember that we always started, sorry, we always start with what is the absolute oxygen value? So that is what is the oxygenation? Here, PO2 is 84. Normal mm -hmm. is 82. Uh, sorry, 184. And normal range is 80 to 100. So this patient has hyperoxemia. So you're supposed to write this patient has hyperoxemia. <laughs> now, whenever I'm talking, if you have any doubts, uh, at the end of first ABG, put it in the chat box so that we can uh, clear your doubts. Or if it is very significant, which you need to understand, you can ask in between. Unmute yourself and ask in between. So the first question is, what is the oxygenation status? And it is hyperoxemia. Then, you, then the second question comes, for the given FiO2, is the PO2 adequate? So we know PO2 is 5 times FiO2. So FiO2 here is 0.5, which is 50%. So expected will be into 5. So we expect the PO2 to be 250. But in this patient, it is 184. So the expected PO2 is less than what is actual PO2. I mean, uh, actual PO2 is less than what is expected PO2, okay? In that case, you must so calculate A, A gradient. Sir, Avaz Okay. So, when you calculate A gradient, you know A, A gradient means arterial alveolar gradient. So, first, you already have uh, 184 as a PO2, which is last. But the other formula you know is 713 into FiO2, which will be in the percent, so 0 0.5, minus PCO2 into 1.25. So if you don't know, please write it down the formula. It's 713 into FiO2. So you don't take it as a 50%. 50 percent. It's percentage you write as 0 0.5, minus PCO2, which is there the value on the ABG, into 1.25. This becomes a capital A, minus A, that is arterial uh, PO2, which is 184. The value comes as this uh, calculation is 356.5 uh, minus this comes as 32.5. From the whole thing, you deduct 184. So the final value comes as 140. 140 is a really high A gradient, which is suggestive of underlying lung pathology. Okay, underlying lung pathology. Normal at room temperature, uh, room air. That is, if the FI2 is 21% or 20%, the normal would be around less than 15. 
So for FI top 50, you will expect it to somewhere around 40 to 50, but it is 140, which is quite high. What does that mean? You are supposed to write it is very high A gradient, suggestive of underlying lung problem. In this patient, what will you su suspect if you go back? Sorry. This patient has was intubated and has a right subclavian line. So it's quite possible that patient has developed pneumothorax. Second thing is patient came with vomiting in a drowsy state requiring intubation and ventilation. So it could be because of the aspiration. So this is your first answer to the question about the oxygenation status. Anyone has any confusion? I will show you finally how we give the marks. Everyone has understood this? Now, at the end of this question, there will be marking given. I uh, request you to all answer, uh, give your marks to your answer, which you had written in your worksheet. A common mistake that people make is, like this is hyperoxemia. But people say, oh, on 50%, I would expect 250. And they call this hypoxemia. Now, that is yes. ridiculous. 184 PO2 cannot be hypoxemia. Okay. Yeah, that's so, why we say that look at absolute PO2 value. Yes, and that's the, why you look at absolute PO2 value. The second thing is a clinical correlation at the end is very important. There's no point in giving numbers 184, alveolar to get in 140, if you do not clinically correlate it with the history given. Yes. So that is about the oxygenation status. Second question was comment on the acid base status. So when you look at the acid base status, you start with the pH. pH here is alkalemia. Is the PCO2 causing respiratory alkalosis? Is the respiratory component responsible? Yes, it's hyperventilation. So patient has a respiratory alkalosis. Is the bicarb adding to the alkalosis? Yes, even bicarb is on the higher side. So there's a metabolic alkalosis. Now, when you have dual alkalosis, you don't have to go for compensation of either of them. There's already a double primary disorder. So there's a primary respiratory alkalosis plus primary metabolic alkalosis. Now, uh, although there is a metabolic alkalosis, respiratory alkalosis, straightforward because we had given in the history that patient is hypotensive, it is always a good practice to calculate the anion gap. So anion gap in this patient, although you remember, we calculate anion gap whenever you have metabolic acidosis. But if there is a history and if there is a significant data which is given, it's always a good practice, at least in the beginning for you to calculate the anion gap, which is normal here. If it's 12, expected is 16. Why did I, why did I say 16? Because they are adding basic baseline uh, anion gap as 12 plus 4, we are getting correction for pH. So 16. But there is basically whenever you have metabolic alkalosis and, and you are calculating anion gap, you're looking for if there is any high anion gap metabolic acidosis. There is no high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So your final diagnosis is there is an acute respiratory with metabolic alkalosis. Now, acute respiratory is important. Why are you saying acute? Number one, of course, pH is significantly alkaline. So there is an acute alkaline process going on. But if you look at the history, history says that patient was brought now. There is no chronic history of any uh, prolonged respiratory problem. So probably patient has aspirated and then uh, put on the ventilator. So even your ventilatory settings would contribute to respiratory alkalosis. So your final diagnosis would be acute respiratory alkalosis with metabolic alkalosis. So I hope you this is clear to all of you, acid-based status. If you have any doubts at the end of this question, you will ask. ask. So finally, when you are writing in the answer column, it comes as comment on the oxygenation status. Comment means you have to write at uh, in these three stages and you have to calculate. So number one, hyperoxemia, because expected, I mean, absolute value is more than 100. Second, expected PO2 is lower than actual, I mean, uh, actual PO2 is lower than expected PO2. So you will calculate A gradient, which was high. High has six marks writing six marks, indicating underlying lung pathology like aspiration or pneumothorax, which has another four marks. So mark yourself. This is how you will get marks in your exams. Second one was, what is the acid-based status? Here, I just showed you how do you calculate. So that will be your rough column in the examination. In the final answer, you will just write what is the acid-based status is going to be acute respiratory alkalosis. 
with metabolic alkalosis. So six, six marks for each. So that is about the first stage. Yeah. Anyone so, who has yeah. not understood, yeah. Uh, acute respiratory alkalosis is two factors, right? Two possibilities. I have uh, one ventilation could be a faulty ventilator setting, and second is aspiration. So that's yes. two possibilities. What about metabolic alkalosis? What are the two possibilities for that? I already discussed during the history, but come on, you all can come out. What you do you think the causes of? Put it in the chat. Yes, you can put it in the chat. What are the causes of metabolic alkalosis in this patient? Okay, dehydration, vomiting. If you have written mixed respiratory and metabolic alkalosis, it's fine. Uh, ultimately, both are primary disorders. Okay, GI aspiration, vomiting, dehydration, fluid lo loss. Anyone else? Anything extra you want to add in this? Hypokalemia. Very good. Yes, very I good. was looking, looking for that. Lalit, very good. Hypokalemia yes. also. Yes, very good. So, so uh, you can mark yourself. Mark, and if it is said, what are uh, more reasons? Vomiting, uh, contraction alkalosis, hypokalemia. And whenever you write hypokalemia, you can always think about hypomagnesemia also. So, uh, the, the same logic as what causes hypokalemia causes hypomagnesemia, especially if it has been there for a day or so uh, or two days. So these are the possibilities. Uh, that's just to score extra marks if it is. Uh, yeah, no, but in this in this question, the, it was not asked, so you will not get extra marks. But it's for your knowledge. You, it can be asked in the exam. So if they write, comment on the acid base status. Whenever they ask comment, that means you have to write the acid base status and give reason for each abnormality. Understood. Here the question is, what is the acid base status? Means we are just, just supposed to write what is the acid base abnormality. But if the moment we write comment or give reasons for each abnormality, then you are supposed to give the reasons. Okay. How many of you scored scored 25 out of 25 in this question? Actually, when you submitted the worksheet. Or you can just calculate your own marks. It's very 21, very good. 21. You should calculate. It's okay even to get zero at this stage. This is the first worksheet. Wow, Lalit, you got... No, who Alokhi got... Alokhi, you got 25. Good. Sayada, 24. Again, also good. So, Madhurima, Hani, Priyanka, where have you lost the three marks? Three, four marks. Three, four marks. A lot of people got 21. So where That's nice, the... actually, for the first acid base status. I'm happy that, uh, you know. You know, it's very good. Yeah, after the gap of orientation session, if you have done it, it's good. The best thing is, you know, if you, you can score, you start practicing the same thing at the bedside in your ICUs. So you, the moment you see the ECG, you right now the question is only this much. So in the exam also, you write what is asked. But when you're solving for the practice, write oxygenation status, ventilatory status, and acid base status, and justify answer, I mean, reason for each one. Why do you think the high oxygenation status is low? Why do you think these are the acid base abnormality? Why do you think patient is hypo or hyperventilating? So you should reason out. If you start doing this till the end of the year, you will crack the ABG station in Neither less than five years. Afan has written, I have written no lung pathology as there was hyperoxemia. It reminded yeah, me wrong. of Mukesh Ambani from maybe whatever is um, 10,000 crores uh, becomes 9,000 crores. We say, oh, there is no loss because he's still very good figure. <laughs> Ask him. <laughs> it, it, it's still... But uh, Afan, did you get the A gradient as high? Afan, did you get A gradient as high? You can unmute and answer. Yes, yes, he said yes. Okay, so the interpretation was a problem. Okay, A gradient high means definitely underlying lung pathology. There is some lung problem, that is the reason the A gradient is high. Okay. Saida so, asked, uh, what about an N gap in this case? Unless it is high, it has no meaning. It's just that because it's right. there, you want to be careful and you calculate. It As I told you, because there was a history of hypotension. Exactly. 
you want to look so for otherwise... lactic acidosis if it's not there you ignore it you know, so you have heard of hidden disorders uh, which are mainly in metabolic acidosis but sometimes with metabolic alkalosis if there is a uh, high anion gap metabolic acidosis hidden you can still pick it up by calculating the anion gap so that is the reason especially that's why it is important to look at the history don't jump directly to the uh, conclusion and look at the acid status so i have i hope this is clear and no one has any confusion or doubts on this we'll go to the second apg Second APG, enumerate five possible causes for this abnormal report. So in the exam, if this comes, in your answer sheet, you will just write five possible causes. But to reach the five possible causes for the abnormal report, you need to find what is the abnormality. So anyways, for learning point of view, we are going to actually go through the uh, overall ABG. So now, when you look at this, always first to look at the oxygenation status. It's 92, so it's normal oxygenation status. I'm not worried at this stage and not going to calculate per se and uh, oxygenation, although it is uh, 7.3 becomes five times 150. So you can still calculate anion gap, I mean, uh, oxygenation status and A gradient uh, in your books for the practice purpose. But because we are looking at the possible causes here, let's move on to the second line, which becomes the acid base status. Now, if you look at the acid base status, look at the pH. It is less than 7.35. So there is an acidemia. We need to look at what is causing acidemia. So uh, if you look at the PCO2, PCO2 is 30, which is respiratory alkalosis. So that is not causing uh, acidemia. Look at the bicarb. Bicarb is on the lower side. It's less than 22. So it is metabolic component, which is causing acidemia. So that's why there is a metabolic acidosis. Now, you remember we learned whenever you have metabolic acidosis or any other primary disorder, you should always check for the compensation. In case of bicarbonate, you know compensation is in the same direction and by 1 to 1.5 times. So, from 24, drop to 15 is by how many points? Nine. 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 So, 1 to 1.5 times means 9 to 13.5. 1 to 1.5 times of this drop. One time becomes 9 plus half of it becomes 4.5. So you add 1.5 times is 13.5. So the change in the PCO2 should be 1 to 1.5 times. That is 9 to 13.5 times from the baseline of 40. PCO2 40. What does that mean? You need to deduct 40 may say 9 and 40 may say 13.5. You will get a range. So range here is 26.5 to 31. So now you look at the PCO2, PCO2 is 30, it is falling exactly in this range. That means there is no respiratory problem. It is just a well compensated, which in final report, we don't write well compensated, partially compensated or uncompensated. It just tells you there is no respiratory problem. This is a pure metabolic acidosis, okay, because it is completely compensated. The next step which comes once you get metabolic acidosis is you calculate the anion gap. And you know, anion gap is calculated by subtracting sodium minus chloride minus bicarbonate. Okay. And here it comes 19. You can calculate. You all must have calculated. It is 19. Now, why did I say high anion gap? What is the expected anion gap in this patient? You can unmute and tell me. What is the expected anion gap in this patient? 10. 10. Yes, because baseline is 12, correct, baseline is 12, you deduct 2 for low pH. Yeah, so but now you don't add for acidosis, you have to subtract 2. Now add you add four. for alkalosis, yeah. For alkalosis, you add 4, for acidosis, you deduct 2. So from 12, which is baseline, you deduct 2. So your expected anion gap here is 10 because albumin is not given. And actual anion gap is 19. So it is higher than your expected anion gap. That's why you got high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Okay. Now, now any one of you have calculated, yeah, hidden in every disorder. Case of high anion gap, you must calculate the corrected hidden disorder. Okay, for hidden disorders. So 19 minus 10 it's is 24. 9. 9, 9 plus 15 is the bicarbonate of 15, it becomes 24. So there is no 
हिडन मेटाबॉलिक एल्किलोसिस और नॉर्मल एन एंड गैप मेटाबॉलिक एसिडोसिस डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड यस मैम ऑल ऑफ यू यस मैम Ma'am, uh, can you uh, pardon me back, ma'am? Whenever you have high N gap metabolic acidosis, you have to look at hidden disorder. That means the moment you have high N gap, what you do is you do what is called as corrected bicarbonate. And what is corrected bicarbonate? It is delta N N gap plus. bicarbonate on the report so what is delta n sorry what is delta n n gap in this patient delta n n gap means difference between the actual n n gap and expected n n gap what is it here 9 9 9 plus what is the actual bicarb in this patient 15 15 so what is the total 24 no hidden disorder yes exactly so there is no 24 uh, there is no hidden disorder if this was less than 22 you would say there is another anion gap metabolic acidosis so if you have already got high anion gap metabolic acidosis what will be the another anion gap normal anion normal anion gap metabolic acidosis correct and if the total was 26 that means it is on the alkaline side bicarbonate is on the alkaline side you would say there is high anion gap metabolic plus metabolic alkalosis exactly did you get it yes ma'am okay okay so uh, other than that what abnormalities here patient has got ins calcium which is on the lower side can you see and hyperkalemia yes hyperkalemia okay because the range i have given as 4.5 but is actually 3.5 to 5 so you pardon me for that our normal range is 3.5 to 5 So basically, the major abnormality here is metabolic acidosis with hypocalcemia. So actually, what is expected in the exam is you list five possible causes for metabolic acidosis with hypocalcemia, and which will be what kind of a metabolic acidosis? What metabolic acidosis? Iron gap. Iron gap. Exactly. So now, now here comes your data set. So let's see what could be the causes. Metabolic acidosis Adrenal. with low calcium. Yes, sir. Uh, Adrenal failure and pen. Yeah, so that is very fast. Good. Okay. So see now you have got these full. These are the data pattern. Okay, you have renal failure, pancreatitis, rhabdomyolysis, tumor lysis, ethylene glycol toxicity, HF poisoning, salicylate toxicity, heparin in excess. now in the exam if they ask five possible causes you have to write only five if you write less it's fine but the moment you write one extra you get a negative marking the only place where you get a negative marking is at this place and if you do a big blunder in your vivas or cases so you are supposed to write only five now out of this which five you will write now hf poisoning is not common hydrofluoric acid hydrofluoric acid poisoning is not common so that is always write what is common so that is out salicylate toxicity comes with high anion gap metabolic acidosis and respiratory alkalosis both as a primary disorder here we do not have respiratory alkalosis so that is also out and heparin in excess where do you see heparin in excess either the sister has taken extra heparin while collecting the abg okay and heparin is heparin sulfate it's an acid and uh, Sulfate gets chelated with the calcium, so that's how you develop metabolic acidosis with hypocalcemia. But that will cause normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. That's why I will cancel this also. Okay, heparin in excess will be a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis with hypocalcemia. Understood. So in the exam, you are expected to write these five. Okay, these five. Enumerate the five possible causes. Five marks for each. Sir, how do I get rid of this hidden disorder? Okay, done. Done. So you all can calculate and write down how many of you got twenty-five or how many have got actually the answer. 
they are not interested in the working up of abg that is for you, you to reach to this that is a practice but a final question which was asked was enumerate five possible causes so out of these you are supposed to write these five possible causes how many of you got all five correct or someone did not un understand okay 20 20 25 that's good. Oh, you missed hypocalcemia. Then how did you get 15 marks? Sayada Huma? Um, causes of hypoma, uh, ma'am. No. So in the exam, if they ask you enumerate five possible causes of this abnormal report, you have to write the abnormality as hagma with low and low uh, cal I mean hypocalcemia. So if you miss that, you will not get a single answer correct. So you will get zero here. You got it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So next time be careful. Whatever data is given, so you remember I used to tell always compare patient's value with normal value. So write down on the side what is normal and what is abnormal. So that you will not say DK. DK does not cause hypocalcemia. No, I don't think DK comes in the differential of metabolic acidosis with hypocalcemia. No. Probably, sir, probably because they took this value as 5. So, hyperkalemia ki when you say. Yeah, but even if you get that, it does not. Uh, yes. Uh, Basically, it's significant hypocalcemia. You cannot explain the hypocalcemia. Yes. I know it's okay. It's it's absolutely fine to make mistakes here. That's how you'll understand ki what is expected in the exam and how much you need to work. But this is just the first worksheet. Okay. Yeah, so, any confusion, you... anyone? Jaipal has asked if I write salicylate poisoning, will I get marks or not? Of course you will because no, no. it says give five possible causes. And that no, but is sorry, a... here. No, but here in no, this patient. Here you will not get uh, yeah. because there's no metabolic alcohol. I mean, alcohol. there's no respiratory yeah. alcohol. Yeah. yeah, you will not. So you marks. have to apply. So there's a data. You can pick up any. But you understood that why we do not want to put salicylate toxicity. Because in salicylate toxicity, it's a classical. You get metabolic acidosis with hypocalcemia, plus you get respiratory alkalosis as a primary disorder. Here, it is not a primary disorder. It's falling into well-compensated phase. So, okay. I hope you understand that. No, actually, only one cause I have written. Salicylate rest poor on the whatever. No, so that's, absolute, that's absolutely fine. It's just that you, you understand to deduct it. Okay. Yeah, I the metabolic acidosis with hypocalcemia. Correct. The cause from the data set. So I yes, just yes. write the one cause from there. Yeah, yes. So this is important. So based on the given history, now here there is not much history given. But if we give you some particular history, then this also may not maybe may uh, narrow down significantly. Okay. So with the history and with the data, you should apply your knowledge. That is the thing. But still, yeah, it's a great thing that you could write all five. Variants of this that you can get uh, in the exam is if you can go back to the second one, Mita. Yes, sir. The variants of this question could be instead of saying enumerate five possibility, they could add in the history that the urine shows envelope shaped crystals. What is the most likely cause? In which case here, then they're asking for ethylene glycol toxicity. Okay. Or, or they can yeah. say a patient with lymphoma. Uh, gets admitted and this is a picture like this. So tumor lysis becomes, tumor. becomes a priority. Okay. Yeah. So or they may give you just low urea creatinine ratio and normal yes. sugar. Yes. So Rather if the low understand. urea creatinine ratio is there, then you have basically two important differential diagnoses, either DK or rhabdomyolysis. But if the sugar is normal, you're essentially looking at rhabdomyolysis. So accordingly, you will have to, based on the history, you will have to narrow down the diagnosis. So, the third APG. A 32-year-old man is shifted from ward to ICU in view of breathlessness. So he was admitted in the wards and now he sh shifted to ICU with breathlessness. There is no other history given. So, breathlessness means it could be because of respiratory problem or it could be because of metabolic problem. So it's not giving us much information per se because there is no other medical history given. 
So we will straight away go to comment on the acid base status and give three possible causes. Okay. Okay. So acid base status. Now, first you will always look at the pH. pH is acidemia. Okay, so there is an acidemia. What is causes causing acidemia? PCO2 is alkalosis. So that cannot cause acidemia. Bicarbonate is low. So that is the one which is causing acidemia. So the primary disorder you got here is metabolic acidosis. Now, what is the compensation in this patient? How many times the bicarbonate is dropped from 24? How many units? From 24 10. to 10. 10. 10. 10. 10, correct. So what will be the compensation? 1 to 1.5 times. That means 10 to 15. 10 from to 5 to 30. Exactly, 25, 25 to 30. Now in this patient, it is 28. So there is no respiratory problem. It's compensating for the metabolic acidosis. You got it? So your own answer is there's a primary metabolic acidosis. Now the moment you have metabolic acidosis, you have to calculate the anion gap. The anion gap here is 10. Expected is also 10 because pH is low, albumin is not been given. So your answer is normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Now, if, if we would have given you urinary electrolytes, you would have calculated urinary anion gap and further worked up because that's how you work up normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. But here, it's just pure normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So it's very, very simple. You just have to give the, so the acid base status becomes nagma normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. And basically, you have to just list the causes of normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So which will be GI, renal, and others. So number one, comment on the acid base status will be a normal anion gap, or some people can write hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. So for normal anion gap, you will get 10 marks. For metabolic acidosis, you get three marks. This is because some people write just metabolic acidosis. They do not write nagma. Okay, so for that reason, we give the three marks separate. List three possible causes for this abnormal re report means basically we are asking for the three causes of nagma. So any three out of them. So essentially, number one, we always talk about is renal tubular acidosis. Since we have not given potassium here, see, sodium and chloride. So renal tubular acidosis will be all three types, type one, type two, type four. Okay. If it was a low potassium which was given, then you had to mention renal tubular acidosis type one and two. But if the potassium was given high, then you would write renal tubular acidosis type 4. But because we have not given uh, potassium, you can just write renal tubular acidosis. That's fine. Or you can mention renal tubular acidosis type 1, 2, 4. That is also fine. But you have just written this much. That's absolutely fine. The second important cause comes as lower GI causes. All lower GI causes, right? From diarrhea, laxative abuse, pancreatic or small bowel, fistulas, stomies, etc. So lower GI causes. Other causes may the first important comes as excessive saline resuscitation and that's how you get hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis, okay, because saline is sodium and chloride. Then the other drugs which can cause uh, normal anion gap metabolic acidosis is we just saw heparin. So either heparin in excess or someone is receiving a high dose heparin. Where do we give high dose heparin? Anyone? Where do you give heparin? IV Pulmon, heparin? And embolism, ma'am. Pulmonary embolism or pulmonary embolism. Perfect. So if the person has received the bolus dose of heparin followed by the infusion of heparin uh, and you do the ABG, it's quite possible that you will get a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, of course, with hypocalcemia. Any chloride containing uh, solutions, like you're uh, correcting the patient with high dose of potassium then that can be uh, responsible for that. Any patient, if patient is receiving potassium sparing diuretics or dimox or too much of TPN, which we don't give nowadays. So hyperalimentation, that is out from here actually. So you can uh, remove that. So out of all the four causes, causes, you have written three, then four marks each. So that's how it comes as 12 here and it comes as 13 here. So any confusion, any doubt, any questions, then you can total your marks. See, it is important that uh, if only uh, 10, 12 people are answering and they're understanding and they're writing their answers and marks, doesn't mean if you don't know, you don't ask. This is the opportunity for you to learn. Okay? This is not your exam. So if you don't understand at any point, even if it is the most stupid thing, please clear your doubts. Okay. 
because as we go ahead, a lot of discussions will be there and then this basic discussions will not be done. So anyone Allah has me. any kind of... Wow. Yeah, your question is, can recovering DK also be listed as a cause? No, because in that case, you would have high anion gap with normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Here, there is no evidence of high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So you should not list that as a cause. Yes. Same way with renal failure, Ariba. Renal failure causes high anion gap metabolic acidosis. And this patient has normal anion gap. But most of them, they got 25 marks. Ah, large volume saline is same as excessive saline resuscitation. We know the other, it's same thing. Okay. Great. So that comes to the, uh, anyone wants to ask anything? Fine. So the last ABG of this worksheet, a 59-year alcoholic is post-operative in the ICU for 10 days following a perforation peritonitis. He is gradually worsening, he has gradually worsening breathlessness, drowsiness for two to three days with increasing oxygen requirement. Now you see there are so many things in the history. Number one, this patient is alcoholic. Number two, this patient is post-operative who has undergone perforation peritonitis. So his GI is going to be not used for a longer time. And because there's a perforation peritonitis, remember patient is going to have a rice tube, it's going to be a long major surgery. So these things you need to remember, 10 days post-operative. Gradually worsening breathlessness with increasing oxygen requirements. What does that tell you? That there's definitely an underlying lung problem. Okay, definitely an underlying lung problem. So the questions here are comment on the oxygenation status and acid base status as first one, and three likely causes for the acid. That means you need to uh, comment on basically acid base status. Key. Why each abnormality, reason for each abnormality. So let's go one by one. If you look at this, Number one, oxygenation status. Now you look at the oxygenation status here. The absolute value is 102. So it's near 100. So you can say it's a normoxemia. Okay, normoxia or normoxemia. It's a normal oxygenation over here. But then second step is what is actual, uh, what is expected PO2 on given FiO2. So FiO2 is 60%. Expected PO2 should be five times that, that is 300, but here it is 102. So you have to calculate A gradient because anyways, patient is oxygen requirement is increasing. That should hint you that you have to calculate an A gradient. And when you calculate the A gradient, it comes around 270, which is quite high. 270, very, very high. So it again says that there's an underlying, someone's uh, mic is unmuted, please mute it. So uh, I hope you, you have understood the calculations and it comes as 270. So it's a very, whose who's mic is uh, unmute? Please mute your mic. I've muted them. Okay. 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 So uh, this is very, very simple. I hope you have got... Uh, high A gradient in this patient and you are expected when they ask in the exam comment on the oxygenation status or the question can, could be in the another uh, way. Why do you think this patient's oxygen is low or explain the low oxygenation in this patient? So questions can be in different ways but the moment the term oxygenation comes or oxygen comes you have to go by these three steps. Number one, look at the absolute value whether it is normoxemia, hyperoxemia or hypoxemia. Number two, what is the expected PO2 for the given FiO2? And if it is not falling into that category, third stage, you have to calculate A gradient. And if you don't stop at calculating the A gradient, you have to say whether it is a normal, if it is a normal A gradient, you say there is no underlying lung pathology. But if it is a high A gradient, you have to say that there is an underlying lung pathology. Like this patient, it's a case of perforation peritonitis, 10 days in the ICU, worsening breathlessness, you have to think of secondary infection and uh, involvement of the lung in the uh, such as ARDS. This is quite high PO, uh, A gradient, 270. Another possibility I was thinking, most likely this is ARDS, 
But if someone has got an abdominal pneumonia, and basal atelectasis. For such high gradients, sir, 270. Any, as a contributing factor, there is ARDS. Uh -huh. Yes. yes. If someone who's got peritonitis and therefore the diaphragms are not moving well, 10 days they will develop some sort of plate atelectasis at the bases. So that could also yes. be contributing. So other than ARDS, you can also write uh, pneumonia because 10 days in the ICU, perforation, peritonitis, increasing requirements, mm. secondary infections is very high. So you could also write pneumonia, developing pneumonia in this patient. So that is about the oxygenation status. Let us talk about the ABG status, okay, or acid base status. pH is alkalemia because it's more than 7.45. PCO2 is 45, which is respiratory acidosis, does not explain the pH. Bicarbonate is 36, so there is a metabolic alkalosis. So your primary problem is metabolic alkalosis. There is no respiratory acidosis as, as a primary disorder. Now let us calculate what is expected PCO2. The increase in the bicarbonate from 24 here is by 12. Okay. The compensation in case of alkalosis is 0.5 to 1 times. So 12 ka 0.5, 50% becomes 6, so 6 to 12. So if you deduct 6 to 12 from 40, I mean, you add, not deduct, because it's alkalosis. It becomes 46, 46 to, 52. to 52. Exactly. Here, patient's PCO2 is 45, just borderline here. So you can say there is no respiratory problem. Okay? There is no respiratory problem. It's a compensated metabolic alkalosis, but in exam, you don't write compensated metabolic alkalosis. If it is not falling in the uh, expected category, then it becomes a second disorder, second primary disorder. So here, there's a problem is only primary metabolic alkalosis. So when you have to write the answer, look at this, comment on the oxygenation status and acid base status. Oxygenation status, normal or normoxemia, a gradient is very high, which could be because of ARDS or underlying lung disease like pneumonia. Anything you have right, even, even if you return one thing, we would give you two marks. When it comes to acid base status, it's metabolic alkalosis. Give three likely causes for acid base abnormality. So basically, they're asking what are the causes of metabolic alkalosis in this patient? Naturally, prolonged surgery, tenders in ICU, you have to think of hypovolemia. There was already hypokalemia. Alcoholic patient prolonged in the ICU, you have to think of hypomagnesemia and then uh, upper GI loss or continuous rise tube aspiration. So, any three of these, if you have written, then, you get uh, refeeding syndrome and uh, cause for it. Now, refeeding syndrome basically, the AA gradient is normal. So, there's no lung problem. If there was no lung problem, if there, if there was no lung problem and we have given you phosphorus because phosphorus comes very high on the card when it comes to refeeding syndrome. It's good to think about the refeeding syndrome in this case. It's a good thought. But in that case, you have ruled out other things. It's not because of the pneumonia. It's not because of the ARDS. Lungs are fine. Still patient is breathless. Then you have to think of refeeding syndrome. So you can calculate if you have any confusion or doubts, you can tell. You see, one reason why you will not talk so much about refeeding syndrome is that this is a, you know, in the causes of hypokalemia, you get true loss and transcellular shift. And 10 days of pathology going on is more likely to be a true loss, right? It doesn't, in the history, doesn't tell you that in the last few hours, he has suddenly deteriorated. Or but something. sir, in refeeding, in refeeding, you could have both true and transcellular both. But uh, that's okay. But based very fact that the lung disease, there is an underlying lung problem and yeah. ph phosphorus is not given. Sugar is not given. Sugar will be slightly on the higher side in such patients. We know this asking a question. Yes. Uh, should we use corrected potassium in such ABGs or go by the absolute value? No, For no, what? you should go by the absolute. Huh. For taking what is and potassium value, you should go by actual value. When it comes actual to correction value. of, yeah. The point of corrected by potassium is only when you decide about the treatment. Do you need to treat it? Okay. Especially then patients the... like DK. Huh. Or severe metabolic alkalosis. So when it comes to treatment, you will correct it. But when you have to take the uh, value for abnormalities, it's absolute value. 
So many people did not uh, answer this. Uh, Ma'am, one question. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, the primary disorder is metabolic alkalosis. And yes. as we calculated, it turned out to be 45, which is less than the 46 or 52 ke beech mein fall hona chahiye, but it's 45. No, no that so, one, ka, one is fine. One ka kuch nahi kar sakte. I mean, it's still a normal. Uh, there's no respiratory problem. Because I thought ke respiratory <laughs> alkalosis is okay. and ARDS. No, no, no. Five, five ka koi problem nahi hai. Okay, okay, ma'am. Okay. One point ka kuch bhi problem nahi hai. Uh, actually, this the, the information is maybe you are a little right in uh, anticipation. Right? Although the value is alright, this patient actually required a ventilation. Okay, yeah. So that was all about the first worksheet. Uh, I hope. And keep the record I had a of... doubt regarding the first yes. ABG. First ABG? Okay, let me yes, see. Ma'am, uh, yeah, this is your like first ABG. The patient, yes, ma'am. The as the patient is on ventilator, the A gradient can't can it be high due to the hyperventilation as well due to the uh, what no, the no, ventilator no, no. A gradient is an actual value which indicates what's happening within the lungs. So even if your ventilator settings are uh, up and down, your A grin will not change. And that too, look at it's quite high. 140, I think we got. Very, very high. And that hyperoxemia can't be explained due to the ventilators? Yeah. As they were using the higher FiO2s? Yeah, that is fine. So, but see, basically, what is an, for the normal uh, cellular living, how much oxygen you need between 80 to 100? So our target is 80 to 100. We, anything more than 100 as an absolute value becomes hyperoxemia. Now that is the reason that is because the FiO2 is 50% maybe because of that. But for that given FiO2, is the PO2 correct? We would have expected PO2 to be 250, mm -hmm. but it is on the lower side. Mm -hmm. So when you calculate it, it, it's basically because of pneumothorax and aspiration. So that's how you come to the reason Despite high PO2, which you are seeing here, if you wouldn't have done, you would have missed pneumothorax or aspiration unless you would have done an X-ray. In an X-ray also sometimes, because we do it in the ICU, in an AP view, uh, many times people do miss uh, pneumothorax, subtle pneumothorax bilateral, and even aspiration. The X-ray qualities, we all know, it is so difficult to pick up these things on the uh, X-rays in the ICU. That is the reason if you have suspected based on the history and then you found out something on the ABG by like the second data like, uh, as an ABG will definitely try to look for these two things in the X-ray. Actually, ma'am, initially I thought regarding the pneumothorax as it was mentioned, the line, but yes. as it was hyperoxemia, I did not... No, but hyperoxemia, that, uh... hyperoxemia is just an absolute value which is, what is given. But is that value, 184, is... Is it expected to the effort of 50%? PO2 should be 5. Uh, PO2 should five be 5 times, times FIO2. FIO2. Yes. So sometimes mm. you may have PO2 of 250. It is still hyperoxemia. Mm. But what if FIO2 is 100%? In that case, I would have expected PO2 to be 500. But it is 250. That means half of the lung is already damaged. Mm. You get it. Yes, ma'am. So the absolute number PO2 gives you whether we are, and I see anyway, in any case, we don't want hyperoxemia for a very long time because free oxygen radicals are further damaging the lung. So we can't keep uh, oxygen uh, more than 140, 150, 200 continuously for a long time. We have to keep it within the physiological range, but is it matching to your FIO2? That will tell you whether there is any underlying lung problem. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Welcome. Now, I have been able to get the names for giving uh, these. Sayada, Sayada, there, uh, sorry. Sayada, there is nothing like mild, moderate, severe. It's only when it comes to hypoxemia, you write mild, moderate, and severe. The moment there is uh, 
the absolute mm. value high, you just write there is a hyperoxemia. There is nothing like mild or moderate or severe. There is nothing like it. Mild, moderate, yeah, severe is applies only to hypoxemia. Okay. So 60 okay. to 80 is mild, 40 to 60 is moderate, and less than 40 is the severe hypoxemia. Meeta, there are some people whose name is coming as headphone, HP, iPhone, XR. I can't give ACP points unless I know who they are. So please change your name. Uh, 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 otherwise, it's not possible to know who is headphone and who is iPhone and who is Galaxy S23. You need to change your names. You need to change your name. Right to put, I told you in WhatsApp to, uh, sorry, in uh, the chat to put your name. Otherwise, you will not get the ACP points. Uh, Venki, had you you had attended the uh, orientation? Venki, you had attended the orientation? Are you listening, Venki? Venki Shrenu, because yeah, you have asked a question. Yeah, she did. So you don't remember how to ex how do you write expected PCO two in metabolic acidosis? Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, uh, I'm Pradnya. I actually couldn't attend the orientation program uh, because I didn't get permission from the hospital. Uh, so all these uh, terms are getting above my head. Okay. So what are we going to do is, uh, I already requested Dr. Jen because some of you have said uh, about, uh, no, because you have not attended. Uh, we are going to open the orientation ke lectures uh, online so that you can go through it repeatedly. Then only you will oh. understand. Yeah, so ma'am. You are the that are you the only person from your institute? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you are basically from where? I'm from Hyderabad, ma'am. Yashoda Hospital. But there are people who are from Hyderabad. I think you should make a group of people, you know, so that you can discuss out few things if you missed out. Actually, I didn't get the orientation as I would. I was suffering with dengue. Okay. Anyways, but we'll open the orientation ke sessions for you. Yeah. Uh, different, I'm working different. on it. It should take few more days to get it in within a week maximum. Ha, less than a week, it should be there. So you can just uh, you know whichever section you want to see, you register for that section. 